Okay. This is a view. All right. Hello and welcome. It has been a while for me since I've done a big Mish Woman workshop, but really happy to get back into it, back into the game. And today to talk about an important one, bulging disc problems. Very common. Chances are, knock on wood, that might happen to you at some point in your life, a herniated disc or a bulging disc, or chances are that you'll know somebody that who's suffered from a bulging and herniated disc. And there's even a small chance that you might have had it at some point in your life and not even felt a thing. Yes, they are extremely, extremely common and just a bit of a wear and tear issue that we're gonna break down. The, the, um, condi the symptoms that we can get go from anything from absolutely nothing to mild to very severe debilitating pain when you're bedridden and you need to go on anti-inflammatories and all that kind of stuff, which is not nice at all. So it can be problematic depending on where your issues lie. So while I definitely recommend going to a doctor, getting examined and figuring out exactly how bad it is, the point being, there's always going to be lifestyle changes that need to be made. It's not necessarily a matter of surgery if you want to fix something. You're going to need to make lifestyle changes. So if you stay tuned for the rest of this video, we're going to talk about exactly what those are. So, bulging discs, first of all. As you can see, each vertebrae has a disc in between. And when we get a bulging disc, it's usually there's one vertebrae or one disc that's seeing an uneven amount of wear and tear. And the chances are that you're probably moving throughout uh, an extension, extended movement, so your back is extending, and it's probably happening at an uneven, not very distributed point uh, and a single point throughout the spine, hence the, a lot of wear and tear. Most of us will have some wear or tear, particularly at the back, because we do a lot of extensive movements. That's where we tend to see a lot more of wear and tear. But when we do get a bulging or herniated disc, usually that's um, the, 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 the bulge could happen anywhere. It's just, it just kind of depends and sometimes it's forward flexion movements and it causes the bulge to come out the back even though we're doing a lot of extensive movements causing the wear and tear at the back. So that kind of lets you know that, you know, this is just basically, it's a sort of a, it's a cushioning mechanism that should be respected and it shouldn't be dependent on one, hence we have all of these. So this is why some movement strategies is something what we want to consider. However, like I said, how common they are. If every single human being went through an MRI machine, we'd all find something back there past the age of 30. It is as simple as that. Because we move through so much extension, we get a lot of wear and tear back there. Additionally, we are forward moving human beings. So this skeleton right here is, as you can see, they're moving forward. Um, as a natural, <laughs> what we're naturally designed to do. What that tends to do to our posture, what will make the most sense, what will be the most energy efficient, is tilt the for pelvis forward, causing us to overly extend the back. And in, in turn, we usually have a forward, forward tilted head because also we're, we're looking forward, trying to go forward. There's some other reasons of why that's all happening, but the, the general picture is that if we're, if we're forward progressing human beings, it makes more sense for us to kind of fall into this pattern. It's just, do we fall into it, into a more of an extreme, causing excessive lordotic curvature, causing excessive breakdown, and eventually what we, like I said, uh, a herniated disc. So, um, like I said, very common and it has more to do with about how we move and movement strategies. But let's talk about the real missing link uh, of what was going on here. So actually let me bring <clears throat> skeleton right back into the picture. So, like I said, we have back muscles here at the back and we have what we're at the front, core muscles, the good old core muscles. Those core muscles, as much as we want, to build up with force and, and strength and all that, they do a lot more of an important job with breathing and, and how we exhale. 
Our diaphragm is attached at the front of the ribs, here at the back. When we breathe 22,000 plus times a day, which we all, as every human does, get into stressful thoughts and therefore probably higher reps of breath, get into stressful patterns, which is breath holding. And usually when we lift objects, because it tends to be stressful, we tend to hold our breath. What that tends to do is facilitate and tense up the diaphragm, causing us to rely on a lot of this back extensive uh, pressure because we're just using the diaphragm and the diaphragm is attached mainly back on the spine as well as the front of the ribs. And what that will just usually do is just flare the ribs up and extend the back because we're kind of holding our breath and creating all this tightness in the midsection. While that is doing its job per se, yes, we are creating tension throughout our body. It's not the right type of tension. And like we said, we run into problems. Uh, it is a diaphragmatic facilitated tension, which is not necessarily a holistic uh, balanced tension. And diaphragmatic tension tends to also just ramp our whole system up, stress us out, and get everything a lot more tense than it needs to be. Going back to the core, the missing link, breathing. When we're breathing properly, that usually means we need to be exhaling properly. And when we're exhaling properly, that usually involves dropping the ribs because everything here is drawing in. Pretty much like a vacuum, we're getting rid of everything that's in our lungs, but we're using the superficial layer of muscles to help drive it out. We simply do not do that enough in life. And another big missing link is that when we exercise, we do not respect this enough. And what we go to, we go to our diaphragmatic breath holding, especially when we do power movements. Nothing wrong if we want to do something to help you lift the weight, but if it's stressing and tensing our body up and potentially limiting movement capabilities by putting us into a, a negative suited posture, we don't necessarily want to do that. And we want to be focusing more on our breathing because breathing is very important. Like I said, 22,000 reps per day, but more importantly, because it stimulates the core, it gets the core going. In fact, core doesn't truly work unless you're breathing. What I'm basically saying is people that have over dominant backs, people have excessive lordotic curvature, whether you have a disc bulge or not, that's kind of irrelevant at this point, but people that have a lot going on back here, what we would call a lot of pathology, tension, disc damage, overuse, that stuff. Chances are you're using your diaphragm a lot for movements and chances are you're not breathing efficiently. So we want to be able to address that. And especially people who are disc pain and all that, we're talking about a lot of chronic overuse and pain equals stress, so probably more poor breathing patterns, which is why we want to be really mindful of this. And again, we're just talking about a system that's built off of habits. So let's say the damage is already done, you've been to the doctor, let's say the, the inflammation is calmed down, but you're still feeling some of that pain. Again, how are you going to take yourself out of this chronic pattern? Well, that is why the breathing is so important and getting this front side to be able to draw in as we exhale, pushing all the air out, getting rid of carbon dioxide, creating a lot of ab pressure here at the front, allowing the back to relax. So creating some neutrality per se, neutral spine. Now, some people have bashed on neutral spine in, in, in terms of movement saying, well, we shouldn't be forcing a neutral spine. Yeah, and yes, to some degree, we should not be forcing a neutral spine. It should be natural, it should be flowing, it should be going back and forth. As we go through tense movements, we are more than likely gonna extend a little bit and that is okay. However, as we are Going through the movements, we want to be breathing, we want to be, make sure the air is flowing. As the air is flowing, that should allow the abs to draw up and in and create a little bit more neutrality. So these are what we want to be mindful of. The breathing is the missing link. And at the end of the day, this is all going to create good habits. And because when we do implement good habits, we create good movement habits. Like I said, if you're not in tune with your breathing, probably going to be holding your breath. 
And if you're gonna be holding your breath, you'll probably be holding your breath throughout stressful movements. We wanna get into a conscientious effort of exhaling, <sighs> exhaling as we move, and then particularly throughout the most stressful part of the movement, <sighs> creating that sense of ab pressure, centralized ab pressure, putting all of the uh, stimulation here rather than back here, okay? So, and as far as one thing, common flexion, this is extension right here. And when we're, we're slouching or what we would call that some point of a flexion, okay? When we're sitting, we actually want to be more upright. But what do we naturally do? We all slouch. But that's because we all, we're trying to rest. We don't, <laughs> sitting upright is tired. So when we're sitting, we, that's when we want to be more in our sitting bones, being more upright, it's naturally better. As we're in the moving world, nothing wrong again was an extended spine, but that's when we almost want to fear away from being overly upright and extended because again, the chances are you're gonna lock into this position when the movement becomes tough. So as we're moving, we want to be more conscientious of pulling ribs down per se and creating some ab tension there. When we're sitting at the office desk, let's not confuse that with a slouch. And what we want to be doing when we're sitting more is creating a higher, taller spine. So this is just kind of some things to be conscious of. Because when we're sitting, definitely being in a compressed slouch spine, not gonna do your disc damage any favors. It's probably gonna make it a lot worse. This is why you wanna feel your sitting bones, be nice and tall. In the movement world, chances are, if the movement's stressful, we're gonna lock ourselves into this back extension because we feel safe there. And that's not gonna do the discs any uh, favors either because we want that neutrality or healthy reciprocating neutrality. So that's when we want a little bit more of this flexion, pulling the ribs down because we're breathing, creating that good old ab pressure. So just to say that there is no one way or the other way, it's not that we lock ourselves into a straight spine and hold ourselves there forever, no. Because a healthy spine is a spine that moves. And at the, at the end of the day, that's what it really is. You have to have a spine that's gonna move and even if you do have some damage, you're gonna have some limitations, but to stay, stay away from pain, to be able to keep moving properly and not, not be completely debilitated uh, as you get older and have less more, more wear and tear and less movement, you wanna be able to move your spine. What does that mean? Well, it means um, exercise, strengthening, mobility, you name it, there's no one way. Uh, it's just a healthy spine is one that moves. And this is something that you want to do pre, this is something that you want to do post. Because just because you've had a herniated disc, fine. Most disc, herniated discs will heal by themselves, but let's just say you even had surgery. Well, okay, now we have a clamp here in the middle, what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to be able to move around life completely stiff. We're still going to have to learn to move our spine. So a healthy spine is one that moves. And bottom line, end of the day, movement must be controlled so at the end of the day you know you slipped a disc maybe you weren't controlling the movement but if you learn to control your spinal movements chances are you'll go be able to go into some more deep ranges because you learn to control the movement and that's what really it is all about with injuries we we, we can really push our bodies to crazy limits crazy uh, joint ranges or or you know explosive movements we heal we figure it out the body is meant to do that but we got to be able to control things and obviously things in moderation as well, rest. So if you are hurt, let's let it rest up, get, get your proper evaluation, whatever you need, address the tissues, get some strengthening. And eventually when you're ready, learn to control the movement and that's what it's going to be all about. So let me give you two exercises that's going to help. Uh, something which in particular I think is really important with learning about this ab pressure as well as breathing. <clears throat> I call this the uh, wall reach. This is a very nice little exercise. Grab yourself a yoga block, put it between your knees. You're gonna lean up against the wall, lower back into the wall. Just walk your feet out with a slight knee bend, okay? 
Now from here, just gonna reach forward, and as you can see, this already flexes our abs down. Now from here, we're just gonna breathe deeply all the way in, all the way out, all the way out. That creates that nice ab pressure, that allows my ribs to drop. With my arms outstretched, I'm breathing into this upper rib cage area, And as I'm breathing out, I'm keeping all this nice and tucked. As you notice, my spine is flexed, but it is nice and tall. This is very important. So we want to make sure that we, <clears throat> there we go. So we want to be able to make sure that we can keep our spine nice and tall, stay engaged here at the front and just breathing all the way. We'll lock that in nicely. The second one is a chop. This one's pretty important because aside from these front to back motions, we also have side to side and rotation, which all naturally happens as we take a step. So the chop motion is a very good way that we can implement all these positions, keep everything flexed and rotated and naturally reciprocated, which is very good. So put your outside leg forward, back leg into the wall, so that you're completely on this leg, and then we're gonna chop past the knee with a nice little exhale. This way, you got your inner thigh, outer thigh, everything's controlling this leg. With a rib cage rotating into that leg, very functional, all single leg stance stuff that's gonna prepare you for single leg stance activity, such as walking, running, very important stuff. And we basically wanna be able to reciprocate and alternate. But first things first is you wanna get out of this overly extended position and be able to create some healthy neutrality, all via good breathing. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give all that a thought. If you do have some disc damage problems, go get evaluated by a doctor. But remember, this is all about lifestyle changes. Implement the breathing. Please shoot me a message if you'd like to know more and any questions in the comments, and I'd love to get back to you. See you guys next time. Bye for now.